All right, this video is about behavior genetics. So uh, we are looking at uh, not only uh, the how genes work, but also we are uh, taking a look at twins uh, in this video. So to start off, basics about genes. How are genes actually made up? So we can start with chromosomes, and chromosomes um, are those uh, structures of DNA that contain gene. Uh, genes and they're basically those biological plans for who you are. Um, you get 23 from your mom, you get 23 from your dad. So your chromosomes you will eventually have uh, 23 pairs, so 46 total chromosomes. Um, now we could talk about um, how, uh, you know, if you have an extra chromosome here or a missing chromosome there, those are particular um, biological disorders, uh, but that's honestly more bio than psychology, so we're going to kind of skim through that part. But you do need to know what a chromosome is, as well as that chromosomes are made up of DNA. So DNA is our complex molecule that has our genetic information, and this is going to make up our chromosomes. So if you can see here, here's our chromosome that kind of looks like an X, and then within it we have our DNA sequence, and then within that, we obviously have our individual genes. Interesting thing about DNA, we're going to talk about a little bit later on this video, um, twins. So uh, the difference between identical and fraternal twins. Well, um, identical twins obviously would be people that um, were the egg in utero split and created two separate babies. Uh, whereas fraternal twins is you have two separate eggs that came out at the same time and were both fertilized at the same time. Um, so fraternal twins are actually no different than any other regular brother and sister. They just happen to be born on the same day. Identical twins, on the other hand, are exact copies and they actually share the exact same DNA. So I'm sure that uh, you have probably seen in some TV or movies uh, where they propose the idea of, you know, uh, what if one of one twin committed a crime and they left behind DNA? Uh, scientifically speaking, you would not be able to prove which twin did it because their DNA is the exact same. Little thing about DNA. Um, then we have within DNA we have the genes, so our genes are within our DNA in here. Um, these are the smaller parts that they occur in patterns. Uh, genes are obviously, um, you could talk about different kinds of genes, you could talk about recessive genes or dominant genes. Um, those kinds of genes would be, uh, for example, for me, um, both of my parents have brown hair, dark brown hair, even though my mom dyes it, um, and brown eyes. Yet, I have lighter brown hair, yes, I also dye my hair, uh, but I have lighter brown hair and I have green eyes, hazel eyes. So obviously uh, there was a recessive gene that both of my parents carried that came down to me that caused my hazel eyes. Uh, for my own children, my husband has dark brown hair and he has very dark, dark eyes. My mother-in-law calls them Spanish brown. Um, and uh, so as a result, we have three children, um, and our two older kids have darker hair, um, darker than mine. My, our youngest has lighter hair, but he's, um, he's kind of, his has been uh, darkening as he's gotten older. Um, but all three of them all have brown eyes, and actually my middle child has like the exact same eyes as my husband, has very dark brown eyes. So obviously my husband did not pass along to any of them any type of recessive gene, uh, and so I kind of got weeded out. Uh, but those are recessive and dominant genes. But you can also talk about active or inactive genes. So the difference though is, is that Active and inactive genes are those genes that are there, but they need, be, need to be triggered. A switch needs to be flipped in order for them to actually take hold. I'll give you for example, um, and I've already told you this in the beginning if you uh, remembered, that I did say that you will probably learn more about me than you ever wanted to know. Um, but um, I have, on my mom's side, my mom has um, three siblings. Um, she has uh, an older sister, uh, an older brother, and then a younger brother. Um, her two brothers are both addicts. They would probably freely admit that they are both addicts. Um, they have both been smokers for decades. Um, I don't know that they've 
ever tried to quit smoking. Um, but also, one of them is an alcoholic. Um, he's not a mean drunk. He just drinks too much and then he does dumb things, like, for example, driving a car. Um, he no longer has his license or a car. Um, and then the other one, um, while he's also bipolar and um, is diabetic, uh, he also has a pain, uh, a uh, prescription med problem. So right now, he's actually in his late 50s, but um, he's already living in an assisted living place, which is good for him because it restricts him from um, the drugs that he could potentially get on the street, which sometimes he still tries to find. So I say all this, um, and then I also have my brother, who uh, I will tell you about later, is also an addict. So the question is, is that do I have, is there an addict gene? Do I have that? Well, you know, there's a lot of studies that look at that. Um, and there's a lot of correlational studies that kind of say, yeah, there is an addict gene. So, but it can be an active or inactive gene. So meaning that right now I'm not an addict. Okay. But could there something have happened in the future that uh, could trigger that? Yeah. Um, you know, lots of times when there's, you know, job loss or personal loss, those things that just kind of push you over the edge and can trigger that. That is what we mean by active or inactive. Um, other examples would be, uh, for example, my, my brother also did a, a study when he was in college of our family history looking at um, mental illness as well as addiction. Um, and he also found a general trend. I already mentioned my uncle is, is bipolar, um, but um, my great grandmother, there is very good, strong, strong evidence that she probably was schizophrenic. Um, she was never diagnosed. However, my grandmother still talks about stories of that. Um, her mom, you know, was institutionalized and some of the things that she heard or saw. So it kind of makes you think schizophrenia, but, you know, at the time they didn't really know enough to be able to, like, label her or diagnose her. But, again, mental disorders are those, uh, those can be active or inactive depending upon, you know, what's going on in your life. So environment can trigger um, particular de uh, genes. Okay, so let's talk about twins, because twins are fun. Um, why do we like to study twins? Well, twins are cool because of the fact that um, we can study uh, identical twins and fraternal twins. Identical twins are better, just because uh, identical twins have the exact same genetic makeup. And so they are pretty much the same person twice. Um, so the cool thing is, is that you can look at identical twins and being able to study, you know, are these things, um, are the similarities a result of their biology and that they're similar because they have the same genetic makeup? And are their differences a result of their environment? Well, the problem with this is, is that obviously most twins grow up in the same household. So as a result, they have the same environment. So it's very difficult to say which is the um, stuff that is a result of their genes and which is the stuff that's a result of their environment. So we actually have studies that have done um, separated twin studies. So ethically speaking, you cannot like manipulate this where um, you cause this to happen, but um, you can, the studies have been done where they've actually found twins that for whatever reason when they were born, identical twins, um, were not able to be kept by the parents um, and they were adopted out. Uh, but for whatever reason, they were not adopted by the same family and so they were separated. So the great part about this is is that they like I said are genetically the same person but now because they're adopted by different families they're living in a different environment and so now we can actually separate and say okay these things are going to be uh, a result of their similarities going to be a result of uh, their genes and the differences are going to be a result of their environment um, so one major study that was done was the Minnesota twin study which is obviously ironic if you know anything about Minnesota um, baseball, anyone? Twin Cities, anyone? Um, but this study, it was interesting because uh, the way it was done was is that they basically put out a call to um, across the country to any twins that um, were basically separated at birth and then they later found each other. So they were not reuniting anybody themselves. They were just asking for reunited twins to come forward so they could study the similarities and differences. It was a huge study. However, it was inherently flawed. Think about this. How they conducted the study, how they actually asked for participants. 
Why is that a sampling bias? Well, part of it has to do with the fact that um, since uh, the twins were um, coming forward themselves, what happened was is that you had um, a selection where they would select themselves. So some that could be biased from a couple of standpoints. Number one, the people that would come forward are more likely to have similarities inherently because they would come forward and they're like, oh, you know what? Hey, yeah, we have lots of similarities. We should go and participate. The ones that have a lot of differences are probably going to be like, no, we don't need to. Other problems, obviously, you don't see any of the people that were never reunited. How long were they reunited and did that impact um, the similarities and differences? So it was, it was flawed to begin with, but still interesting. Uh, matter of fact, um, if you read in your book, the uh, author included an account from the Minnesota Twin Study about the gyms. Um, I have another uh, one to read to you uh, that uh, was about the Minnesota Twin Study. So it said, uh, separated as infants, twins, uh, Jerry Levy and Mark Newman grew up to share characteristics ranging from their firefighting advocation to taste in beer. Neither knew of the other's existence until a shared acquaintance brought them together. Upon meeting for the first time, each saw his own reflection. They had grown the same mustache and sideburns and each wore the same glasses. As the brothers talked, they discovered they had more than looks in common. Levy went to college and graduated with a degree in forestry. Newman planned to go to college to study the same subject, but opted to work for the city trimming trees. Both worked for a time in supermarkets. Levy had a job installing sprinkler systems. Until relatively recently, Newman had a job installing fire alarms. Both men are bachelors, attracted to similar women, tall, slender, long hair. In addition to being volunteer firefighters, they both share favorite pastimes of hunting, fishing, going to the beach, watching old John Wayne movies and pro wrestling, and eating Chinese food in the wee hours after a night on the town. Both were raised in the Jewish faith, but neither in particular religious. Both men drink only Budweiser beer, holding the can with one pinky curled underneath and crushing the can when it's empty. And becoming acquainted, observes Jerry, we kept making the same remarks at the same time and using the same gestures. It was spooky. He is he and I am I and we are one. Okay. The idea here is, is that there are some things that are similarities. Personality is similar with the identical twins, that's very genetic. Uh, likes, dislikes, that's very genetic. Uh, differences on the other hand, for example, uh, they would have differences in um, their attitudes, their political beliefs, religion. Those are things that could be definitely impacted by their environment and their adopted families. Um, so while interesting, there is some questions about the reliability of the study as a whole. Now in class, I, I did have everybody pair up with another student um, and go through a list of topics together and discuss what they had in common, what they had different. And it's always funny to see um, how many things that you have in common together. Oh my gosh, we're twins, right? Uh, but there's a lot of things that are just a result of your environment, particularly because everybody at our school all come from a very similar background. In order to be able to truly test whether or not it is a result of genetics and uh, being able to say that we're twins, you would have to find somebody that obviously is from a different culture uh, and they would probably have a lot different answers than you. However, I have done the same exact um, uh, the same exact study uh, with uh, twins that I have had in class before. And so it was very interesting because out of 39 different categories, they said that they agreed on 33 things. The interesting one that they did not agree on, however, was handedness, which is usually a genetic trait. Um, and one of them was right-handed and one of them was left-handed. So still interesting studies to be done. All right, that's it for now. Let me know if you have any questions.